I've always said that we all have a book that tells our life story and that some of our books are shorter than others, but the last page of all of our books are the same. And if somebody walks away from someone with ALS because they believe they know the, the last page of the story, then I'd say you're missing some of the most amazing people you'll ever meet. Even though I was diagnosed uh, in 2016 in March, um, we noticed things going on um, in the year 2014. Once I tried to run, I couldn't. I said, what the heck's going on, you know? ALS is so much more than just a motor neuron disease diagnosed to one person. It very quickly becomes a family illness just because of the nature of the disease. When one person loses function, another person has to pick up their function. For me, just trying to keep up with, okay, what equipment does he need? What, you know, who's gonna, what kind of help can we um, incorporate all these friends and neighbors and coworkers that are offering to help? You know, you try to keep up, but it's a lot of information. The hard part was how do I tell my kids? You know, how do I tell my friends? It robs a person's identity in their family. It, it, rob, it robs their role in society. And you're, because you're slowly changing over time, it's almost like you have to re-identify who you are every time there's a change. On the surface, you would think you'd have every reason to be pessimistic and, and not particularly caring of, of helping others. That, that's, that would be the antithesis of, of an ALS patient and their families because people want to strike out this disease. And if, it's, if they can't save their loved one, they're going to try to save somebody else's loved one. And it's, it, to me, it's often the best of what people can be. We are helping the patient and the primary caregiver remain a team, just like they started. So, so sometimes people get unintentionally put into the role of patient and caregiver, and we want to them to stay whatever that relationship is, first and foremost. So the ALS Association is our contact for, they, they direct us. If somebody's diagnosed today, there'll be somebody from the ALS Association in your home, looking at your home, trying to determine what modifications are going to be needed in that home. We pay for some in-home health care for patients because at some point in time, everybody needs a little extra help. We also provide counselors on staff, so we do individualized counseling and end-of-life care planning and um, just one-on-one -on -one to try to pay attention to the psychosocial aspect of this disease. In this kind of an illness, there's so much uncertainty, and we're actually able to bring some calm into their storm. I think the biggest change, uh, I would say, in the last 10 years or so is number one, uh, there's far higher awareness, which certainly comes from, in part, the Ice Bucket Challenge from three years ago. That's, that was a game changer. Then there, there have been advances in technology that, that help people live their lives far better than 10 years ago or even the time when, when my dad had ALS back in the late 1990s. And there are uh, large um, studies underway to expand our genetic understanding, 1,000 patients, 1,500 patients, and even, even more. And we're probing the genetics at a, a, an incredibly deep level. If we stop it there, it's like, okay, you're going the highway and you stop in and say, just wait. And then we might lose so much, you know, momentum. So I think that's what the urgency is to keep it going. That once you know it's becoming clear and clear, if you keep on going on that, eventually, hopefully, we can reach the answer. Well, it's a very exciting time because of the new drug, Radicavit, that just was announced. And we need better drugs, something that'll not just slow it down some, which is good, fantastic to slow it down some. We're looking for drugs that will um, really stop the progression. There are three other drugs that are in late stage clinical trials. I think this is the first time that people really believe, really believe, that we are making substantial progress and starting to unlock the keys of how ALS works. These are exciting times. It's much more positive, much more at least, even if you don't have the light at the end of the tunnel. You have that hope that you're going in the right directions, or even if you're going in some directions, you will eventually find that pathway. It is possible that in the next couple of years, 
that when somebody gets the message from their doctor that you have ALS, it's possible that that won't be a death sentence any longer. And the idea that we're on the cusp of that is, is amazing. And we hope that something substantial is uh, just on the horizon. We're going to be married 23 years in September, right. you know, and we'd like to maybe plan a tripper. I mean, nothing major, but something that he can handle. Skydiving. Skydiving. Maybe not skydiving. <laughs> we are just fortunate that his disease has progressed slowly. And there's people much younger than him that have been diagnosed. And I, I feel for them because I, I, I think, what if they would have had three or five or seven or ten more years? Absolutely, there's a sense of urgency. Absolutely. Support right now today uh, also helps those people who are suffering and who may not benefit from those, from those drug trials or, or drugs two or three years down the road. And if, if at the very least, at the very least, if we can improve the quality of life of someone who is suffering, that's, to me, that should be an urgent message that we should at least, at least be doing that. And that, that requires a lot of effort, a lot of scientists, a lot of researchers, and a lot of money. I'm very optimistic. Uh, I don't feel so bad uh, having this disease if I know that or I can believe that in 10 years that maybe it will be a thing of the past. And our hope is that we can develop something that has a substantial impact on ALS. That's our goal. I got 18 months old grandbabies and for me, Joe Winkler, um, to see them grow up, that's hope for me. Just like my wishful hope is that uh, in my lifetime I see a cure, for sure. I am very hopeful that we will find a cure. I, I have no question that it's going to happen. There's always hope. I think if we lose hope, we've lost everything.